How's you guys' this day going, huh? Mine's really shaping up. Operation Wheel Horse Rescue Engage. Well, some of you guys have asked to see my hoard of Cub Cadet Garden Tractors. And uh, I have a few wheel horses mixed in here too. But anyway, this isn't the way I wanted to show them to you. Our town is currently being flooded and the building that I have these in is got about a foot of water in it right now. And unfortunately, I have nowhere to go with them. I can't get them out of here before the water comes up and overtakes them. I'm hoping it just stops, but I have yet to see any slow in the rain. It's not looking good. Did all I can do for these ones. They're good runners. We stood them up on end, try to keep the water out of the engines at least. Hopefully it doesn't get that high. Three feet high and rising. It's over my knees. Put my tractors that I can up on end. Try to keep water out of the engines. Ugh. So I've been making pretty good progress here. I've got actually most of the tractors already done. I got one last tractor that is really important to me that I want to make sure is okay. And then the rest of them are parts tractors, but I'm still going to drain the rear ends out of them and stuff. But anyways, I have had this tractor. This is a Cup Cadet Original or what is referred to as an original. It was the very first Cup Cadet model ever produced. And I've had this thing probably eight or 10 years at least, maybe longer. And I've never touched it. Somebody actually gave me this tractor and I wheeled it down here and parked it. The engine did turn over whenever I got it. And I always thought it'd be fun to play around and get it running one day. Well. Today's that one day, and the stakes have been upped quite a bit since it's been underwater now. I have no idea how long it's been since this thing has run. It, when I got it eight or ten years ago, it didn't look like it had run in quite a while then either, so at least ten years, probably longer. Let's see if we can't drain all the fluids out of this thing. and put some fresh stuff in it and try to get it going. This is actually a prime candidate for a restoration project in the future. I really, really like these tractors. The originals and then the next series that came after this, the 70 and 100s, those are my favorite Cub Cadet models. Fun fact! This is what happens when you inflate tires with tubes after they've been in a flood. It pushes all the water in between the tube and the tire out through the valve stem hole. But hey, it's holding there. All right, we got this thing pushed over into the light here. And that was harder than I expected because the tires do not want to turn one of the spindles in the axle, or maybe both of them, are pretty well stuck. So I had to just drag the front end around. But anyway, I got it over here. Let's lift the hood. Let's see if this baby is still free, at least. Ooh. At this point, these tractors have been sitting for four or five days since they were flooded. It's taken me that long to get time to get down here and take care of them, which I hate, but. 
Yeah, okay. It, it turns over. It's a little crunchy, but it turns over. So you can tell this machine is extra full of water on account of I just pushed it over here to this spot. Haven't done anything to it yet other than turn it over that little bit by hand. And it's already dumping oil out of the breather. So that means the water in there has floated the oil up to a level where it's just pouring out of there. How many layers of house paint do you think you gotta put on a tractor before it comes off in the sheets like that? I, I can count at least three layers there. And I'm talking like gobbed on with a gallon can layers. She is rough. All right, let's work on getting the fluids out of this thing. There's our oil bath air cleaner. Not surprisingly, it's full of water. I'm actually gonna go ahead and take the whole oil bath assembly off of there, give us some room to access this carburetor. Next, we'll get this fuel bowl out of here. Like I suspected, it is also full of water. But other than the water, it doesn't look really too bad. I've seen plenty dirtier than that. It does appear that the main jet is stuck the float doesn't want to go up, so we'll have to take that off, figure that out. There's a fuel settlement bowl here. It could also have water in it. In fact, I'd be surprised if it didn't. We'll pull that off, clean it out too. Maybe. Oh! These glass bowls have a way of getting really stuck onto the gasket. Uh, I think I just tore the gasket, so that ain't gonna want to seal. Well, nope, we made it. Came off in one piece. How about that? Actually, it just smells like varnished gas. Doesn't actually appear to be water at all. I'm gonna try to get all the oil and water out of this thing now, and I suspect it's probably mostly water at this point. I don't know if I've said it already or not, but what happens when something like this gets completely submerged in water, the oil is lighter than the water, so the water actually floats the oil up and out of wherever it can. Some of it will get trapped in the motor around the cylinder and whatnot, but a lot of it will end up going out the dipstick hole or something like that. Yep. There we go. Nothing but water. Reminds me a lot of the transmission in the auto car whenever I went to drain it. Well, that was a sad time, huh? Ah. Missing the pan. I'm going to jack the front of the tractor up so I can better position the pan. I should have done that from the beginning. That's way more gooder. There we go, there's some oil. Hey, hey. nice of you to join the party. Well, we'll let that drain and I'm gonna start unbolting the rear end because I'm sure it's also full of water. There's so many layers of paint on that bolt that I, the socket doesn't want to go on it. Same thing happening there. <laughs> Unreal. I hate when people paint tractors with like house paint or something or just gob it on there like this, but at the same time, 
I gotta appreciate that they're taking an effort to keep it from rusting away, so I guess it's uh, six of one, half dozen the other. Usually you can pull all the bolts out of these rear ends and you'll still have to fight to get that cover off. Watch this be the one that doesn't though. Fun factoid for you, if you're into these tractors, the rear ends and this tractor here, this exact rear end is the exact same one that they used in the larger Farmall Cubs. They just put different axle housings on the same exact transmission. That's how overbuilt the transmissions are in these little tractors. All right, let's see how much water awaits us behind this door. There we go. Guys taking guesses? What's the over under on more oil than water? Or more water than oil? There we go. First signs of water coming out the side there. Man, this cover is really on here. Probably one of the hardest ones to get off I've ever played with. There we go. It's coming now. What a sad sight. Look at all the yumminess we have in this rear end to flush out. This is uh, pretty bad. It looks like it might have had some water in it previous to the flood, maybe. I don't. I can't tell. The good news is all the gears. Uh, everything looks really good in here. No issues at all. No no rust to speak of. So that's really good news. So I mentioned that the jet in the carburetor here was hung up. But actually, after looking at it, the choke mechanism is also stuck. The adjustable jet is stuck, and so is the throttle plate. So we're going to go ahead and shoot it down with some good stuff, some of the croil, and uh, let her soak for a little bit. I'm sure we'll get that freed up in no time. Remove the float there out of the carb. Now I should be able to get that jet loose. These things get stuck because this probably had some uh, fuel in it when it was parked and the fuel come down here and turned into varnish from sitting so long, which is basically like a glue after a certain point. I'm having problems getting that jet out of there. So to get to the back side of it with uh, some penetrating oil, I'm going to spray it through the fuel inlet here, which leads directly to the top side of that jet. So, just load that up with some croil. Give it a few minutes to set, and I bet you that thing falls right out of there. Yep, there we go. Just a minute with that croil, and it broke down the uh, varnished fuel that was holding that in there, and it slid right out. You can see how thick and sticky this stuff gets and that's just fuel over time it evaporates to that point well the last thing we have to do boy check out that that's an old plug wire that might be the original coil wire <laughs> anyways last thing we have to do try and get this spark plug out of here so we can blow any water in the cylinder out of said cylinder Everything looks good. 
You can tell a lot about the way an engine was running by looking at the spark plug. And looking at this plug, it looks like this engine was running almost perfect. Got a little bit of carbon buildup on the back side here, but the front side looks absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's not heavily carboned up or oily. It's got that nice uh, whitish gray color to it. That means it wasn't running too rich or too lean. It looks good. Kind of hard to spin this engine over by hand with any kind of speed. I think I'm gonna actually go ahead and hook some jumper cables to this thing and see if it'll crank over on its own. See if we can't get this thing to spin over. Uh, it might spray some water out the exhaust or out the plug hole here. Contact. Oh. The starter might be pretty weak. Sometimes these starter generators get pretty, pretty tired. There we go. <laughs> well, the starter is definitely weak. I think it has a dead spot in it. got some compression though. I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of diesel fuel down in the crankcase and uh, a little bit of oil in the cylinder here and we'll let that crank over for a bit and that'll flush out the crankcase and lube up our uh, top end. All right, well, I cranked it over with that little bit of diesel fuel in the crankcase. We'll drain that out now and put some fresh oil in it and uh, go from there. Did I say fresh oil? I meant fresh used motor oil. Actually, I'm just dumping this in here right now to flush out any of the diesel left over in the crankcase. And I probably will try to get it to fire on this crappy oil. Alright, now before we can even think about trying to get this uh, thing to fire off, we're going to have to clean these points, I'll guarantee it, because anytime these machines sit for a long time, the points always get corroded and no longer make contact. And on top of that, this one went through a flood, so I'm sure there's moisture in there that needs blown out or just heavily corroded and need cleaned. Ugh. All right, these things here are your points, breaker points. Now this little tab here rides on a little pin here, which is inside of the engine riding on a cam lobe. And that all that does is open and close this thing at a proper time. To, what happens is the little contact points that you're opening and closing here become corroded, as these ones clearly are. All you need to do to fix that Sometimes you can get away with just doing this, like rubbing them together a little bit. But more often than not, they they make special files, or I always just go uh, steal an emery board from my wife, and uh, that gets in here real nice, and you can clean those points up. Well, I just had to run down to the parts store for an unrelated thing, and while I was down there, I decided I'll actually buy the proper ignition file. Never in my life have I had one of these things, but we're going to go ahead and give it a shot. I think I already like my nail file better. Alright, well the points should be uh, cleaned up, and we're not going to mess with the adjustment at all because, like the uh, spark plug indicated, this thing was running very nice last time it was run. Okay, I'm going to try to turn it over. Hopefully you guys will be able to see it sparks just a little bit down there. That means the uh, points are good. Call me crazy, but I think we're ready to see if this thing's going to pop off. I just got to throw the spark plug back in, and uh, we'll just hit it with a little bit of ether and see if it wants to 
give us a, a little pop or a sputter or something. Okay, there goes nothing. The starter is pretty weak. I'm having to help it get going. Starter, the starter is actually too weak to even crank it over now that it has compression with the plug-in. I'm going to try cleaning up the ground. That can possibly help. And if that doesn't do it, I have another starter sitting on the shelf here we could swap in. Well, I cleaned the connections off, and I have my uh, jump start tractor over here idling. Uh, I'm going to shut it off before I try to start it, but look how fast it spins over now. <laughs> okay, attempt number two. I think it's going to crank over quite a bit faster now. Open this choke up. A little whiff. Contact! <laughs> you see that? It sputtered a little. Sounds kind of low on compression, but the rings are probably stuck and after you run it for a while a lot of times they come back around give it another whiff <laughs> Woo! That's been a long time coming. This thing's been in my possession for over 10 years. And uh, that's the first time I've heard it run. That gets me excited. Let's go ahead and throw the carburetor back together and put some gas in the tank and uh, see if we can get it to run on its own. Now, if we were trying to do this right, of course, we would take this carburetor completely off of there and disassemble it and go through it make sure everything was really clean before reassembling it um, I mean I can tell you that this thing is not <laughs> it's far from spotless but uh, really that's not what I'm trying to do with this thing I just kind of thought it'd be cool to get it running since I had to go through it anyhow and it's gonna get parked in the row over there with the rest of the tractors and probably sit here for quite a while yet I thought you guys should get to see this. I just tried to wipe out the sediment bowl from the fuel tank, and that is the resin that we're dealing with there. I mean, it's like, I don't know, it's hard to describe, but it is really sticky and really, really thick. And you bet your butt that'll gum up a carburetor in a hurry. So we're gonna get this thing cleaned out and get it back together. All right, everything's back together here. The fuel bowl back together, but I have the fuel line off just yet because I wanna put a little bit of fuel in there and I'll let the first little bit dribble out, clean out any dirt that's in this line and then I'll reassemble it. Um, for fuel, when it comes to gasoline for something old like this that's been sitting, I always run two cycle mixed gas through it first, just, you know, the first tank maybe. And something like this, I'm barely putting anything in anyways. But uh, the extra oil in the two cycle fuel is just extra extra insurance that we're having good lubrication on the top end and everything. And there's additives in that oil that might even help loosen up stuck rings. I don't, I don't even know, but it just always seemed like a smart thing to do to me. filled up the fuel bowl and not coming out the line yet oh there we go shut that back off and we'll hook that line up oh 
Time to see if our float's gonna work or if it's gonna let fuel dump everywhere. All right, let's go ahead and see if we can't fire this thing up. Hopefully it runs under its own power. Contact. You see how fast that thing popped off? Give it a little shot of ether, see if it'll help it out. It wants to go. Doesn't seem like it's pulling fuel up through the main jet. This is where we should have, uh, completely cleaned our carburetor and we wouldn't have this issue.